Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we created our first Spark streaming application. We have seen how to read data from a socket and write the data in console. Today, we will understand what is happening in the background when Spark is executing its jobs in micro batches. We will also see the different type of output modes such as complete, update and append that Spark offers for its streaming applications. Now, if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist from the beginning. So without any further delay, let's begin. I am in my JupyterLab environment. Now, I have opened the same code that we have written in our last session. This is the code that we have written to read data from sockets and write the data in complete mode to the console. Before we can start, I have connected my command prompt to the Docker container. We have done this in our previous session. So you have to execute the docker exec command in order to open this. Now, once you connect it, we will write our ncat command open the endpoint for our socket. For now, I'll keep it as it is. I have also cleared my console. So I have cleared the Docker console to erase all the unnecessary logs and keep the terminal clear. Now, we know that the Spark streaming processes the data in form of micro batches. So that is the first thing that we will see with the help of Spark UI. So to do that, let me start and generate my Spark session. So I'll run the first code. Okay, my Spark session is up and live. Let me go ahead and refresh the Spark UI. Great. Now we don't have any jobs for now because we have not triggered any action. Let's go back and run the transformations that are required in order to process our data for the word count problem. Let's run this cell in order to read the streaming data from the socket. Again, we'll print the schema. So we'll have only one column called value in that data frame. Let's split the lines into words. And once we have the words, we will explode the data to bring in all the words in each row. Next, we will aggregate the word based on the number of times they are appearing in the line. Okay, the last step is to write the stream into the console in complete mode. Now, we know before we do that, let me open the ncat terminal. So I'll write ncat minus l9999. Our endpoint for the socket is open. Let's go ahead and run this. Let me open the console. Awesome. We see our first batch being printed here. Before we can go ahead and put our input, let's go ahead and check the Spark UI first. So if I go to the Spark UI and if I refresh the job tab, you can see the first micro batch being processed. Now, here you can see it has taken 208 tasks. Let me expand this. So if we go to the stages, if I scroll down, you can see it has completed two stages. The first one, it has taken eight tasks to read the data from the socket. And if we expand the 200 task, we can see it has taken 200 tasks for the aggregation. Now, we know the default shuffle partition for Spark is 200. And this is the reason it is creating 200 shuffle partitions and 200 shuffle tasks in order to read the data and do the aggregation. So now we can conclude that our whole code starting from reading till aggregation is being executed for each of the micro batch. So if I go to the jobs, Right now, we have only one job, which had 208 tasks. Let me go ahead and put the first input. So I'll write owl and cat. Once I hit enter, we can see the micro batch here in our console. Great. We can see our micro batch being processed. Let me go ahead and refresh the job. Nice. You can see one more job created. And again, it has taken 208 tasks. Now, we know that the shuffle partitions, which is set to 200, is unnecessary. So we can optimize this job now. Let's go ahead and reduce our Spark shuffle partitions in order to make sure that the job executes faster. So I'm back with my code. Before we do that, let's restart our kernel. So I'll go ahead and restart and clear all output. Our kernel is restarted. Now we need to set our Spark shuffle partition to a value which should be less than 200 because 200 is unnecessary number of partitions, right? So let's go ahead and do it here only. So I'll put Spark dot Conf dot set and I'll write spark dot sql dot shuffle dot partitions and I'll put the number as eight. Okay, let's go ahead and generate our spark session and by default it will take the configuration along with it. So let me run this. Great. Let's read our input data. Let's print the schema. Let's run the split code, then the explode one, and then the aggregate. Now, before we run our query, let me go ahead and restart the ncat. So I've cleared it and I'll rerun this. So I'll write ncat minus L and 49. 
I'll put enter. So it's ready. Let me go ahead and clear the console as well. Nice. Let's go ahead and run the query. So I'll come back to my Jupyter Lab and let me run this. Let's refresh our Spark UI as well. Nice. Now, if you see, the duration is reduced. And our first job, which is the batch zero with zero records, is processed successfully. If I go ahead and open this, again, you can see two stages. This is because we have an aggregation and the data suppling is happening. But this time, the shuffle partition is set to eight. And thus, we have only eight tasks aggregating the data. And thus, this job has run faster now. Awesome. Let's go ahead and process few more micro batches in order to see the execution timing. So I'll go ahead in the NCAT terminal and I'll put a line called owl cat doc. I hit enter and I refresh the job tab. You can see the job has processed so quickly. It is one second. Previously, it was taking 10 seconds in order to process. So we have optimized our job here. Now, if I go to console, you can see the batch has processed so quickly. Let me go ahead and put one more line. So I'll write cat dog. Now you can see it is processing so faster. Let me go ahead and refresh the job as well within one second, right? So we have optimized our first job in the Spark streaming. Let's go ahead and understand different output modes that are available with Spark streaming. Spark streaming offers us three types of output modes. The first one is complete. The next one is update. The third one is append. Now we know that once we have a micro batch, Spark will process the each micro batch with the whole query and it will produce the output. So consider we have a micro batch as owl and dog and we are counting words. So our output is owl 1 and dog 1. Now in the next batch again we send dog and cat. Now if we have a complete output mode, Spark will process the complete data as output. So we will have output as owl 1 dog 2 and cat 1 even if in the second micro batch we have only processed dog and cat so this was our first micro batch and this is our second micro batch even after the second micro batch our output would be owl 1 dog 2 cat 1 now consider i put a third micro batch as cat and dog so our output will now become owl 1 dog 3 cat so you can see, even if owl being not sent in the two micro batches, still Spark is putting it as an output. So this mode is called as complete mode. Now, what happens in case of update mode? So consider our first micro batch was owl and dog. So your output would be owl one and dog one. When your second micro batch will be processed, Spark will only process the data which is being updated. So in this case, you can see dog is present in the first and the second micro batch. So dog is being updated in the second micro batch. So your output for the second micro batch will be dog two and cat one. You will not have owl in the output of second micro batch. But when your third micro batch will be processed, your output would be cat two dog. Now you can see we have cat and dog in both the micro batches M2 and M3. And in your third micro batch, you will have the values updated for cat and dog. You will not have the values for owl because owl is being not processed in any of the micro batch. And this is how update happens. Now, not all of the sync support updates. For example, if you have an output mode as file. Now, if your output mode is file, you cannot update the data of a file. So, not all the sync means the output that we have for streaming supports update mode. So you have to be very sure that the output you are using should support update. For example, a RDBMS system or a console or a Delta Lake. Now, the third one being append. Now in case of append, you cannot update your data further. It means once you have specified your output mode as append, the previous data is locked. This is why append is very popular with logs because you are not going to update your logs. Rather, you are going to add logs in the bottom. Now, we will hold append for now. We will discuss more about append when we discuss the watermarks in Spark streaming. For now, we just need to know there is one more mode called append, but we are going to use it when we discuss about watermarks. Now that we understand the output modes, let's go ahead and see complete and update output modes with our word count example. Okay, now I'm back in the code. So, I have restarted the kernel and cleared all outputs. I put the output mode as complete for now. Let's go ahead and Turn on our NCAT terminal. So I'll write NCAT minus L and I'll put 9999. I'll put it as enter. 
let's go ahead and run our code one by one and we will see what is happening in the console. So I'll run the Spark session first and then rest of the code one by one. And now I'm writing the string as output mode with complete. So I'll go ahead and clear the console. Our first micro batch is processed. There's no data because this is batch zero. Let me put owl and cat as the first line. Great. Our first micro batch has cat and owl. Now I'll put dog and cat. Now, if you see, even if in the second micro batch I have not put owl, you can see owl as the output. And this is what complete does. Now, if I put one more line as tiger and dog, so in our third micro batch, we are just updating dog and adding tiger. As soon as I hit enter, you can see everything being printed in the micro batch. So this is what complete mode does. Let's go ahead and restart our kernel and change the output mode to update. So I'll restart the kernel. Let me change the output mode to update. And let me rerun the whole code again. So I'll rerun everything. Now, let me run the write stream again. Let me go back to console. This is our first micro batch without any data. Let me go ahead and put the same data here again, right? So I'll write owl and cat. Now you can see cat and owl as processed for our first micro batch. So I'll put dog and cat now. Now, if you see, you don't have owl as the output for the update mode because we are only updating cat and our dog is the new data for this micro batch. So only cat and dog is being processed as a part of update mode. Let me go ahead and put tiger and dog now. Now, if you see, we have tiger and dog as two because the dog was one previously and it is being updated to two. Okay. Now, if I put dog and cat, you will see the count for cat is three, dog is three. I hope you understood the different output modes that we discussed today. In our next session, we will see how to process files with Spark streaming. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.